In order to dispose of waste efficiently, it's standard practice to locate your pig pen close to a source of water. How can we continue to give consumers inexpensive, quality foods and at the same time ensure that our farmers can make a living and be an integral part of their communities? And just as importantly, how can we develop farming practices that we can all feel good about, that preserve our environment for our grandchildren and for generations to come? Farming certainly has changed since our grandparents' time. Many of us have friends or relatives that moved off of their farms and into cities in pursuit of opportunities that didn't exist in the past. At the same time, as society has grown wealthier, we have demanded easy access to farm products at low prices. Farms, as a result, have become more industrial, growing larger and more specialized, focusing on fewer animals or crops. In turn, by focusing narrowly, the financial risk to farmers from the impact of diseases or global competition has grown. And with larger, more intensive farming practices, wastes have grown, often polluting the local environment. As wastes have grown, so too have environmental regulations. Many of us, particularly those of us in large cities, now live lives so distant from these changes that agriculture for us increasingly is turning into a mysterious black box. As concerns about agricultural practices around the world have grown and fingers have been pointed at everyone from consumers to farmers, a new agricultural revolution has been quietly growing. The tools of this revolution are sustainable agriculture practices which often mix ancient techniques with modern science, reducing the impact on local environments and giving farmers greater security through income diversification. In the western state of Paraná, in the south of Brazil, already one such sustainable practice is taking root. It's called integrated farming, and its roots go back thousands of years in Asia. In 2000, George Chan, a Chinese descendant from the island of Mauritius, with the help of two organizations, Techpar Institute and Ziri, introduced to Brazil what we call the Integrated Farming System, or IFS for short. To understand integrated farming, we need to think differently than most of us are accustomed to. Instead of focusing on increasing efficiency in agriculture through specialization and scale, IFS takes a systemic approach. Systemic approaches highlight the importance of interconnections and the meaningful consequences of those interconnections. For instance, a human heart doesn't contribute much on its own, but placed inside a human body, connected to a system of arteries and veins that go to all parts of the body, it can help sustain life for many decades. Like the human body, IFS works as a system of systems. By mimicking natural systems within the farm context, IFS ensures that wastes from one form of agriculture become a resource for another form. Since we utilize wastes as resources, we not only eliminate wastes, but we also ensure an overall increase in productivity for the whole agricultural system. Just as importantly, we avoid the environmental impacts caused by wastes from intensive activities such as pig farming. Notice that if we view pork meat production as a linear process, at each stage we generate wastes. For instance, the first stage, pig farming, commonly generates polluted water that affects areas outside the farm. If we take a systems approach, however, we can find ways to utilize these wastes as resources. IFS is a systems technology that does just that within the pig farming stage. Thus, 
Wastes generated by pig farming are eliminated or dramatically reduced. Let's take a deeper look at the different components that form the integrated farming system. First, we start with livestock, such as pigs. The pig pen should be designed so that the pig wastes can be funneled into the next stage of the IFS, the biodigester. The biodigester bacterially processes the wastes, resulting in two outputs a liquid effluent and a flammable gas. The gas, commonly known as biogas, contains methane and can be used in a variety of ways, including powering a generator. The effluent passes on to the next stage, the sedimentation tank. In the sedimentation tank, the solids settle to the bottom. These solids are removed periodically and serve as a high quality fertilizer which lacks the strong smell of untreated animal wastes. The liquids continue on to the algae tank. The algae tank environment begins a process that results in the growth of microscopic organisms. This starts a natural food chain which provides sustenance for the fish in the fish pond, the next stage of the IFS. The fish pond uses a traditional Asian method of fish culture called polyculture. That means instead of raising just one species of fish, several are kept in the pond. With each having its own ecological niche, the natural food chain feeds the fish and the water, scientifically proven to be safe for the ecosystem, is returned to the local lake or river. All these different components working together form a system that is compact and delivers notable benefits. Let's review these benefits. First, the biodigester produces biogas, which can save farmers money by displacing the costs of other fuels. The farmer, for instance, might use the gas for cooking or to power an engine. Some farms in Paraná, for example, use biogas-powered engines to grind feed grain. Second, the biodigester creates a fertilizer effluent which has virtually no smell and in most cases obviates the need to purchase inorganic chemical fertilizers. Now, third, pig farms typically are overwhelmed by flies, which are vectors for many human and pig diseases. Fortunately, biodigesters interrupt the flies' reproductive cycle, dramatically diminishing their numbers and allowing farm workers to enjoy a more pleasant, sanitary environment. Fourth, now that the Kyoto Protocol is in effect, in some countries, like here in Brazil, the biodigester can be used to earn extra income through the sale of carbon credits. Fifth, the farmer now has a new high revenue source of income through aquaculture. Of course, this diversification helps the farmer in times when, for instance, the price of pig meat drops. Sixth, the farmer now has peace of mind. All the wastes are being utilized within the IFS system. Scientific tests confirm the high quality of the water exiting the system. Thus, the farmer need not worry when environmental agents show up for a visit. Lastly, the farmer has made a greater contribution to society. Not only does the utilization of methane mean a reduction in greenhouse gases, but the IFS system exceeds the Kyoto Protocol's concerns, since the protocol is concerned only with air quality. IFS is one of the tools in the new sustainable agriculture revolution. As farmers begin to adopt these kinds of technologies, we can all feel better about the foods we eat and the quality of our air and water, ensuring that our grandchildren will enjoy the world as fully as we do today.